Okay, hey everybody. I uh, figured I would show you all how I do VQFP64 packages because I know some people were having some trouble with it. So a couple little things here. I'm going to be using some Loctite uh, MFR301. It's a liquid flux. Comes in a little pen that acts as a dispenser. So that makes things nice and easy. I've got a pretty decent soldering iron. This is a Metcal uh, handpiece with an S. TTC 144 tip, I think. Little little angled tip. And then lastly, if I can get this in the picture, uh, this is some Kester No Clean. It's a 20 thousandths diameter solder, so not super fine, but a little bit finer than your, your usual 16th inch or 031 type of stuff that you get sometimes. So, uh, <clears throat> for a VQ, they aren't too bad there. It's basically the same pitch as a, as a TSOP 48, like a little flash package or something. But first and foremost, what I like to do is just put it on the pad. So I'm going to try to zoom in here and hopefully this focuses pretty good. All right, that'll work. Um, so I'm just doing this without any vision assistance or anything. So I'm just going to kind of visually make it so it lines up. When I do PCBs with these kind of footprints, I like to make the pads a little bit longer than this, but it doesn't seem too bad. I mean, it's nice having a little bit extra room to solder with, um, but these are exposing enough of the pad that I don't think it'll be too much of a problem if I can get it lined up pretty good there. That looks all right. So what I do usually is put a little bit of solder on the tip of the iron and then just try to tack down a corner. Oops. Move that back in frame. And this doesn't have to be particularly clean. You just want it to stick. There we go. That was one. And I'll just kind of rotate. I like to do two at a time if possible, just so that the chip can't move around too easily on me. And it doesn't really matter which corner is here. I'll just do this other guy right here. This is also kind of an opportunity to help square it up a little. You see, I just got kind of ugly blob on that. Doesn't matter. We're just using it for mechanical stability at the moment, and eh, it looks okay. It's not the world's best placement. I can probably go in here and nudge it around a little bit more if I want to. But yeah, for not having a microscope on it or anything, that's not bad. So next step, take the flux pen and just dispense. <laughs> well, it's a whole lot of flux. Apparently the flux pin was getting a little warm and has completely doused this thing, so I'm going to clean up some excess there. And suffice it to say, that has plenty of flux on it. So now, uh, when doing this kind of stuff, the idea is really to use as little solder as possible. So I just put a little dab on the iron itself, and what we do is called drag soldering. So start and drag, and I've got a lot of solder on there. So that'll take a couple passes to sort of clean up, but do another side here, see if I can do that a little bit cleaner. There we go. You see I'm just sort of moving back and forth across the chip, and I'm not too worried about creating shorts at this point. If you're, you know, do this a couple hundred times, you'll be able to solder without creating any little excess blobs there. But for me right now, I'm just going to get it on, and then we can clean it up in a second, because in all likelihood, most people won't get it perfect the first try, so it's probably better to show you how to clean than anything else. So that's on there now. You can see I've created some little shorts. So this is where the flux saves your ass. A little bit of flux. And what the flux does is it reduces the surface tension on the solder and then helps clean up some, uh, yeah, if you've got any oxidation or anything on the pads. But these are brand new boards, so it shouldn't be a problem. But what you can do then, take the tip of the iron and pretty much parallel to the pins, you just kind of touch and drag away. And what'll happen, I don't know if you can see that, is a little bit of the solder will stip, stick to the tip of the iron and remove the short. So I'll try that again over here. I've got a good, good size blob. You might have to repeat the process a couple times. And pardon, I'm being a little sloppy with the flux here, but the camera is in my way, so I'm sort of awkward here more than usual. That looks pretty clean. Go to the next side. Yeah, it looks like I got a short near that brown pore, so repeat process, a little bit of flux. Just 
Still looks like there's a little fever there. And you might chase it around a little bit, but that seemed to clear it. And do I have anything on this last edge? Oh yeah, see there's one. At least they're easy to see. Like that a little. And same drill as before, I'm just gonna heat and drag and try to get that off with surface tension on the tip. This one oh, got a little bit. And you can apply flux again if you need to. But I don't think I do that time. So that I think is probably all there is to it on this one. Looks fairly clean. And one thing I didn't think to check was what the uh, pin one orientation was, but I think I got it right. <laughs> but anyway, we're mostly just showing you how to do the uh, do the soldering anyway. So worst case, I have to pull that off and redo it. Not the end of the world, but that's how I handle TQFPs. And yeah, if you get that angle, you can kind of check this way too. And you know, if you don't have a microscope, a little camera or something like this, actually can do most of the job. I'm a little suspicious of that pin on the end right there. I can't really see without magnification if that's short or not, but it doesn't hurt to go back in and just quick touch on that. I like that better. So anyway, hope that's helpful for somebody. Good luck with your assembling.